All right, so we have them narrowed down to this 33 photos here. And the next step for me, usually on a big set like this, is to just go through and do some basic color correction, basic cropping, just get an overall view of what the photo is going to look like before I decide what my final edits are going to be. So for this one, I'm just going to do a basic crop here. And I'm just going to run you guys through doing that. So we'll darken just a little, drop those highlights. I'm going to leave the blue tones. Let me see if lifting the shadows makes a difference. Not really, so I'm just going to drop the blacks to get that contrast popping right there. Something like that, and yeah, I'm just going to leave it with those cooler tones. All right, on to the next one. we got to straighten it out. So into the crop, just drag the straighten tool right across that water line there. Crop in just a little to get rid of some of those extra bits on the outside, and I kind of want it offset a little bit more. And I do like the symmetry of kind of almost having it closer to the middle. It's not quite in the middle, but close enough all right and I think I'm just gonna do the same thing here just drop these blacks to get that contrast going there I think I am going to warm the bird up slightly but I want to leave the background and everything really cool to kind of emphasize that dusk tone so I'm gonna go even more towards the cool side and then we'll try a subject select and hope that works out nicely it did but I need to add in the reflection there so I'll just do a brush little feather on that should work. I'll lower the flow just a little bit. And then we'll just start painting that in down here. I don't have to be real perfect on this. It's just kind of a smeared reflection. I just want to get most of the bird and its head in the reflection there kind of covered. And then not so much on that spot that went outside there. There we go. That should do. Oops, of course those last brush strokes just went qu quite errant there. All right, there we go. And then, yeah, that's good enough. All right, let's get rid of the overlay. I'm just gonna warm that back up. So we'll keep the bird slightly cooler. And in fact, you know what? Maybe it's less warming up and more of a little bit of a desaturate just to take some of that blue out. There we go. I just don't want the bird to be that blue because those birds are not that blue but I like everything else being kind of in that blue tone. So there we go, done with that one. Moving right along, this one's that symmetrical shot I was talking about, so I'll make sure it's level. I do wanna bring up the overlay. This one I'm probably gonna try and make quite perfectly centered, so we'll put that reflection line, or the water line, right smack in the middle. That looks good. Same thing as before, just darken these blacks, because these, Early morning shots are just really weak with contrast. This one, in, in this case, I think I'm going to pop the lights curve down here just to get things to brighten up just a tad. And there we go. And then there's just going to clone out, or heal out, I should say. This one bright little thing right there on the corner. We'll just line that up. And opacity 100%. Get rid of that. There we go. Done with that one. Okay, this one. So first things first, I always like to crop first. So I'm just gonna jack the exposure up so I can actually see this water line here. And just kind of run this across to make it straight. There we go. Then exposure comes back to where it should be. And then actually we're gonna do lighter overall. I'm gonna bring this exposure up. I'm gonna zoom in here and kind of watch my quality. Because I was at a thousand ISO, I don't wanna push it up too, too much here. And we'll drop the blacks. I'm also going to warm it up to get some more of those sunset sky or sunrise sky colors down there. I want to get those in here. And then I'll go down and do some noise reduction. So we'll just kick the masking up, throw a little noise reduction in there. A little too far. And there we go. That kind of cleaned that up. Lastly, I do, I think I want to crop out the that reflecting stuff in the bottom. And then I'm gonna clone that antenna or whatever out of the sky. And there we go. So next, I'm gonna drop a linear gradient on and let's get that sky back. So I do wanna keep the trees and everything else back there a bit darker. So we'll take that down to a level where I like it. Something like that feels good. And I'll fade this in a little bit more, but you see that little bit of lightness that's along the low edge there? I'm fine with that. I think it just kind of looks like there's maybe a little haze or something hanging back there. And then I'll throw another linear on the bottom half here. 
and darken that not quite that much. Oh, oops, I accidentally added that. I mean, I meant to make a new one because I wanted to do a different amount. There we go. So we'll drag that one on there, darken that a little bit. So we leave this center band quite light. And then we'll go ahead and do a sky select. It should nail it right along that tree line there. And we'll just darken that up and drop those highlights and really get that sky popping in there. Now, that sky looks really good to me right about there. And because of that, that means the rest of this image is too light. To me, this makes no sense. The bird here is almost lighter than the sky that's like glowing like crazy with sun in the background. So it just doesn't logically make sense. It looks too over edited to me. So the solution is going to be, I'm going to darken everything down a bit so that the birds and that foreground are a little bit darker. Then I'll go back to my sky mask and then I can kind of recover that up brighter just a little bit. And then maybe I can go just in the middle. I'll throw a radial right in the middle here just so I can recover the highlights there a little bit and get a little more color, but overall maintain the sky darker. And there we go. That seems like a better fit. This seems, I mean, it's still, I know I pushed it, but this seems a little bit more feasible to see in real life with your eye versus it being kind of crazy. So there we go. That one's good. I like that a lot. This one, I think, I think I'll keep that glowing down there. So we'll just kind of lower this a little bit. It looks nice and level to me, so I won't mess with that much. I'm going to brighten it just a tad, shadows up, drop the blacks, get that contrast in there. I'm just going to do a quick radial in this section here, big soft one, maybe punch up the highlights a little, maybe the whites a little just to get that tricolored heron to stand out a little bit more, and then a little bit more dropping of the blacks, a little warming overall on that bird. And then I think we're good to go on that one. All right, moving right along. Same thing on this one. So I'm just going to click previous here, bring over the same settings, fix the crop because this one is crooked. Crop out the bright spots in the top there. Center up the spoon bills in the back. Then we'll go grab that radial and kind of move it onto this bird and more in the middle. And there we go. Same settings as the previous shot. Nice and easy. All right. Loving this one. Just love this light the quality of it. Let's see how good I did with being straight. I think I did pretty good. Now all we got to do is crop this out. Now, what a bummer because I like to stay within proportions. I don't change my aspect ratio to crop this bird out. I have to lose a little bit of that bokeh down there, but I love the lens flare up top. So that to me is the more important thing there. A little bit lighter, lift the shadows a little, actually even more, really get that lens flare going. Then we'll drop the blacks. There's that. I'm going to copy these settings. I'm going to check all except for the masking spot removal and crop. So that way I have those settings and can apply them to future photos here. So I'll just paste those settings on there. There we go. So it just went from that to that just gives it a little bit of a punch and we'll go right into the crop, straighten this out and then crop this one out. I can get away with a slightly less lens flare in favor of keeping the reflection and that's kind of doing the trick for me. In fact, I think this one could go a little bit more there. And then actually, I think I'm going to, there we go, punch that up. Ooh, contrast is getting a little bit too much. Or saturation, maybe. So we'll just drop the vibrance a little bit. There we go. Digging that. Next photo. Let's do same settings. I'm just, I hit the previous button there or the shortcut for it. And it's a little too light. So actually, that didn't work. So let's undo it. Crop it straight. Get rid of that brightness, get rid of that craziness, and then just a little bit of space there. There we go. Just drop the blacks. Everything's looking pretty good there. I'm gonna do a quick subject select, see if it gets it. I really don't want to do the whole bird. I just really care more about the head, so I'm just gonna do a quick intersection with a linear, or I'm sorry, radial. And we'll just kinda of lighten up that whole section of the bird there. And so we should end up with there. There we go. Lighten it up with the exposure. It looks washed out. So we got to bring the contrast back with the blacks and then maybe just a little bit lighter with the highlights there. So watch this overall change from there to there. Just make that bird's head stand right out. And I'm really digging that shot. That's fun. All right. This one, just a little bit of crop in and let's get rid of that bright sky. 
straighten it out just a little. There we go. Not too much to do with this one. I'm just going to darken the blacks a little bit, richen it up, and I'm done. That's a nice basic edit there. This one's going to be really nice and rich. Let's straighten it out. Just go straight across that water line there. You know, I don't know that I have to lose the sun down there. It is. It's too bright. It's just grabbing my attention far too much. I can leave a little bit of those bright spots down there. Something like that. And maybe come in just off that one polka. There we go. See, now it's all about the bird. A little bit more. All right. I'm going to go just a tad lighter here. And then I'm going to try a subject select. And let's see. My goal with this one is to just enhance those highlights there. So I don't want that bottom half to be getting any. So I'll subtract a linear out so that goes away. And then we're just going to lighten up the highlights, the whites. And then I'll drop those blacks again just to maintain contrast there. But overall what it should do is, yeah, kind of pop that bird out a little bit, especially the rim lighting. There we go. I'm digging that one too. I love backlighting. Okay, wait. Was that the one I was going to try and merge? Mm, I don't think so. I think I just was going to maybe edit this one on its own. Maybe I was going to try and merge that with the previous one. Hmm. Because now, let's see. Reset. No, totally different composition, so I was not. Okay. I couldn't remember what I was planning on doing. All right, let's try straightening this out. Crop in so we have just the sun and the bird there. Let's see what we can get out of this. Uh, this might work. A little bit there. Light, lighten the shadows a little bit. Drop the blacks. Now watch we throw a linear on the bottom here. Drop the highlights. Ooh, that sun gets funky. Quite quick. But there we go. Something like that. It's kind of interesting. Not in love with it, but it almost works. It feels like it's crooked just a little bit more. There we go. I don't love the composition on the bird. It's just kind of centered left to right, but it totally works. The noise level is not bad back there. So yeah, interesting. Cool. All right. Now some of these coming up, I know I was going to stitch. Oh, maybe those were the two right there. Okay. All right. So let's keep going with this. All right. I'll speed this up for you guys. So basic color correction here. We're just going to lighten the shadows, drop the blacks for contrast. Linear on the bottom, drop the highlights there to get a little bit of recovery there, but I don't want to do that to, to, well, I just don't want, I want to always want to make sure I don't make this gray like that. See that it, it went from white to gray. No detail came back, but it just looks gray. If there's no detail there, it should be white in my book. So from there to there gives me more color back in there and those funky lines, which are kind of cool. Now I remember that's why I like this one. And then just a basic subject select should get just that one but that's fine we'll try and subtract out that other one with a linear just get rid of you over there and then we have just that bird which is good we'll lighten him up just a little bit or her i don't know and a little contrast with the blacks we're good to go on to the next one same thing here now this one wow every once in a while guys I actually shoot a straight photo look at that barely needed a rotation Oh, this is the one with the really cool lines. Okay, I want to leave this one pretty dark overall. Let's just drop a linear on, drop these highlights, see what we can get more down in there. Eh, there we go, something like that, not much. And then I'm actually just going to not do anything else globally. Let's do a subject select. Hopefully grabs both of those birds. Did a pretty good job there. Subtract a linear, get rid of that one. And then we're going to brighten this up, mainly with the highlights and the whites just to get that to pop. And then we'll drop the blacks. Whoop. Be subtle with that blacks adjustment, apparently. That thing went down real quick. All right, lighter, lighter there. And I do have to zoom in and subtract that out with a brush. Let's get rid of the feather, flow to the max, and let's get in there and clean that up. Because you can see it was just that subject select had kind of went up in there and wasn't doing a great job. And I think there's a little bit of, no, I guess not. I thought there was a little bit more bleeding out over there, but that seems pretty good. Clean that up. Nice. I'm digging this too. All right. Now I think we're into that one and that one. Let's try a merge here. So we go photo, 
photo merge hdr let's see how this works unable not enough matching photos for merging huh all right let's see i wonder if it changes up if you actually lighten this up and bring some shadow detail into it if it can then see enough there you know let's try it i'm guessing it'll still have the same problem yeah ah oh, bummer i guess the exposures are too far away well this is something we could do manually. So let's edit this up and see if it's good enough to bother doing that. All right, so exposure up there. I'll throw a radial in down here. Big soft radial. Drop the exposure so we get some of that back. I don't know. I mean, you know what the problem is here? It's great that it shows off the sky and imagine basically this is what I would try and do, right? I'd try and place this section down in here just so it recovers, but leave everything else kind of like that top half there, right? That's what I would be doing. Cause you can see, I can't recover the detail here that I got here in the dark exposure. But if I just look at this top half on its own merit, it's not that great. This bird is out of focus, but not enough. So it's kind of like, is it sharp? Isn't it? There are pinned to the background pretty close. So I'm not getting a lot of good separation from the in focus bird to the background. So the background's a little distracting there to me. And I mean, everything else is great. Like if that background was much further away and it was a little bit more dreamy, I think I'd go for it. But as it is, I'm not loving it. So you know what? Reject both of them. They're gone. Let's keep moving along here. This looks nice and straight. I mean, God, I don't really have much to do this. Maybe a little lighter little shadow lift, drop the blacks for some contrast. There we go. Probably same here. That's it. Yeah, I just brought the same settings over by clicking the previous button there. I'm going to crop out these bright spots at the bottom and then maybe that brightest spot at the top. And then, yeah, those look kind of fun. Maybe I'll just inch up so they're touching the edge. There we go. And we're good on that one. Nice resting, relaxing bird. Same thing here, let's just drop the blacks to cut through some of that haze, that lens flare. Drop that down. Uh, the in-focus water line looks like it's right there and there. So I think, again, I shot pretty straight. It's amazing, every so often I actually get a straight photo. Uh, this one looks really good, I like the colors in this. It's, there's a lot going on there as far as the colors, but they're all pleasing to me. Kind of the same shot here. So let's straighten it out. There we go. Get rid of these hot spots. Just crop them out. Just kind of go with some offset. This one I think could go a tiny bit lighter. Lift those shadows, drop those blacks. There's the contrast and color that I like. Maybe a little much. So let's back off the vibrance a tiny bit. And in fact, I'm gonna go back to that previous shot and just back off that vibrance a tiny bit just to kind of mellow it out a little bit. There we go. Ooh, nice and moody. So first things first, straighten. I think that's the in-focus waterline. There we go, good enough. Let's just go straight for a subject select. It should pick that bird out quite nicely. And I'm just gonna lift the highlights, the whites, and then drop the blacks to maintain contrast on it. I'm basic, and then I think I'm gonna actually warm this guy up a little bit to make it look like he's got more of that glow on it. So watch, before, after. See how it just kinda pops that rim light? But watch this, this is the, the nice thing. Look at this area and watch how when the adjustment is on, it doesn't make it much brighter. All right, so I'm just looking to enhance this stuff, all these bright areas there, which is why I lightened the highlights, the whites, and then drop the blacks. Because without the black drop, it does get lighter, but with it, it kind of maintains the same density it had before. So the bird still fits in, but we just make him stand out more. This one is definitely like one of the faves. I really like that. And I would say, let's bring the same settings over. So we just click the previous button, get the same settings over. And yeah, that's working quite nicely. It straightened it out. It popped the highlights, kept everything dark and moody, digging it. This one I think is gonna work. All right, so let's see, we got that one. Oh, that's the one and that, those two are closer alignment. Okay, so this one's probably on its own. So this is gonna be a great example here of let's do an edit. Just like that, drop the highlights, exposure up a little bit, lift those shadows, there's our birds, drop the blacks, warm the whole thing up a tad. 
And then let's darken the whole thing a little bit more so it looks a little bit more realistic. Those birds shouldn't be that light. The house is something that'll have to go away later. But there we go. So there's the single exposure blend of just lightening up. And this works quite well. So now we have another version right here. And this one, let's see if we can do the merge to HDR. Let's see if this one works out enough. There we go. It says it will. So I'm just going to click merge. Give it a second here. And there we have our HDR. So this one should, in theory, give us even more leeway to play with. So uh, just like before, I want to start with the crop. I'm going to lift the exposure up, straighten the crop here, cross that water line, come in just a touch so I don't have anything overlapping on the edges, and then we'll drop our exposure back. So now I should, in theory, be able to lift the exposure a good bit and really get something back with that highlight drop and then really lift the shadows and get something out of that and then drop the blacks there and then warm it slightly like I did before. I gotta say, I think this is looking more pleasing. So let's zoom in, let it render. Yeah, it's looking nice and sharp there, but check that out compared to just the um, single image blend. Something just a little bit softer. We're able to get like a easier blend between the two here and I would say also a little bit more recovery in the water and this bright area there than we did there. We came close to it there but this one's a little better. Also this one shot just a little bit tighter focal length I think 100 versus oh they're both 100 so maybe I moved in uh, on this one but I will say between the two of them I kind of like the slightly closer composition. The sky is pretty here, but I don't need to see that much of it. This is showing most of it, so I'm going to go ahead and reject that one in favor of keeping this one, and that will be the edit there. So let's go with this one. Just a little bit warmer. Drop these blacks just a little, and then I don't want to crop in any on the head, so that's going to be a clone out if we do a final edit on this one. And then we're almost there, folks. Hang in there with me. Let's take a look at that. Um, I like the cool tones overall. Just want to lift the shadows, drop the blacks, get some contrast and a little bit brighter detail there. Done. And then this one, let's clone out that other bill. So grab the, the healing or the spot removal tool there, put it on heal, clone that out. Something like that maybe. Yeah, that kind of does the trick. Uh, the level looks really good there. I'm just going to warm it up slightly. A little bit less magenta because the bird's head was getting too pink and their feathers are white there. And then let's try the old shadow lift, drop the blacks. Trick. And I'm just going to throw a radial right in there and then drop the highlights on that. Try and get a little bit more recovery. See from there to there. Just a little bit more recovery on those bokeh balls. That's nice. I like that this one's a little bit darker, a little bit warmer, a little less magenta. Slightly lift up the exposure, shadows up, blacks down. We'll keep this thing a little bit more moody. Again, this is probably something I would try to clone out. And let's straighten this one. This one feels a little sloping up to the left there. Not too bad. You know what? I don't love this tricolored walking across like that, so I'm just going to reject it now that I've gone through it. And uh, just a couple more here. So we'll straighten this one out. It's nice we got that bird in the background, but we can crop out that bright hot top there. A little bit warmer, a little bit less magenta. Let's go with a lighter vibe on this one. Lift up the shadows after I did the exposure. Drop those blacks for maintaining that contrast quite a bit on this one. And there we go. And then this one's probably going to be something along the lines of the same thing. So we'll just rotate that, crop out that bright spot, bottom left. Exposure up, slight warming, shadows up, blacks down. I think we're done. Oh, one more. I, this one, eh, the trees are nice back there, but it's kind of boring compared to the light on the other. So now I'll reject it. So look at that. Sometimes just sitting with these images for some time kind of changes my feeling on it. Now that I look at these, I think they're a little too magenta. So I'm going to back off of that a little bit there. There, that's cleaning it up. Yeah, that looks more realistic. I think I rejected that one anyway. Yeah, these were like too pink. They should be golden warm, not 
like magenta pink, you know? So there we go. Oh, I guess I didn't reject that one. So let's fix it. There we go. Okay. So back up to all photographs. We will now do delete rejected. Let's get rid of the last few. And we're down to 29 photos. Now it's time to pick the favorites that I'm actually going to edit. So this is basically really now it's like the final, final call. So let's go through. We'll pick out some variety here. Uh, I like that one. That one's really cool. Let's do wings up. Let's do, let's try this. Dark and dramatic is kind of cool. I really liked one of these lighter ones right where the bills are almost touching. Love that one. This one, we kind of did the HDR thing on that. I think will be really cool. Just a nice sweet portrait of the birds right there. And I think that should do it. That should be plenty of photos to edit. So let's jump right into that. And now that I see them all, like that. This one just looks a little too magenta. So that'll be the last tweak right there is to go back to that one and just dial out some of that crazy magenta pink and make it look a little bit more orangey golden. That's much better. That's more accurate to the color of that bird. All right. So now we have eight photos I set aside that we're going to go ahead and do final edits on. So that'll be the next step. I'm going to do each one individually to break these videos up. All right, everybody, let's jump right in and do the final edit on this wood stork. So if you missed the final cull and uh, basic color correct video, I'll just walk through the steps with you. There's the original straight out of camera, basic crop, then drop the blacks, temperature got cooled off, did a subject select, fixed it up with the brush, and then warmed it up and desaturated the bird a little bit so the bird wasn't quite as blue. So basically from there to there, you can see, I got rid of a lot of that blue in the bird. Next step is to take it into Photoshop. So let's go right ahead and do that. Here we are in Photoshop. First thing I always do is put a clone layer in if I need to do any cloning. Not too much here, but you know what? These feathers along, whoa, that's a little bit much of a zoom there. These feathers along here can go. So let's do spot healing brush. I forget which one that is. There we go. Spot healing brush right there. And I'm just going to click on these spots. They should pop right out. That's really good. This is the only one that needs fixing. I'm going to go back to the clone tool and just kind of make sure this edge goes straight along there. There we go. And then just a couple more of those little bright feathery spots. And we can leave some of the other stuff. That's fine. Love the feathers on the bill. I got to say, there's not a lot left to do on this photo. You know what? I'm going to do a final, just tiny tweak with the crop only because this bright piece of grass there and there is just kind of pulling my attention off to the left. So I'm just going to grab the crop tool, shift it over that way just a little bit, make that the final crop. And uh, let's see if there's anything we can do into the bird itself here. So let's add a curves adjustment layer, kind of punch some stuff up a bunch here but maintain contrast and I'll invert that mask. And then we're just going to go in with the paintbrush, soft paintbrush, tiny, we'll brighten these feathers, maybe the, the edge, like the top edge of the bill there, just to get that to stand out a little bit, maybe those feathers and just basically any of these light areas that already exist on the bill of the bird. I'm just going to kind of bring those out a little, same thing with the top of the head there. And then maybe a little around the eye just to kind of make that stand out a little. And these brighter areas back in on the creepy, creepy head of this <laughs> wood stork. That's about it though, right? From there to there. There we go. A little bit of enhancement there. But yeah, I don't feel like I need much of anything else on this one. So there you go. That was a really easy edit. Um, nice and clean to begin with. You know what? There's one thing I can try and do to make the bird stand out more because he's on this background. Let's do this really quick. We're going to do a curves adjustment layer. I'm just going to dim down this highlight point and then put a point in and kind of darken everything. We'll invert that. I'm just going to take a big soft brush and then slowly just kind of paint that across whoops, the middle here and a little bit smaller. We'll take it across the reflection. Sorry about that. It keeps sending my image off here. We'll just take it across the reflection of the grasses there. So, We'll just kind of dim down those grasses, but I don't want to do that to the bird. So I'll go back to the background layer, select subject. It should do a good enough job. And then we'll go back to that mask, paint with black, 
bring our bird and our reflection back. Then I'll zoom in to 100% and just kind of check that. I'm just going to look around and then I'll toggle it on and off, make sure nothing looks weird. So right there, you can see there's a couple of hard edges there. So we'll come in. I've deselected now, so I don't have the selection going. And I'll just kind of paint those feathers back in and then put some of that darkness up in there. We'll just kind of clean up these bright feather edges there. Thankfully, the adjustment I did was subtle enough that, like I said, the selection does not have to be flawless or perfect. Uh, and then here's another good catch right there. See how hard that edge is? Watch when I toggle that on and off. I don't want any of these hard edges. It should be a soft, smeary reflection. So I'll just kind of paint that with some more black to kind of blend those edges. And there we go. So now I've just dimmed down that background section and just made it less bright and so the bird stands out even more so that I think is good for the final edit there let's save that up we'll get back into Lightroom and take a look at it real quick and just show you the total before and after on that so here is the original if I reset that we have from that to that nothing major at all but from there to there cleans it up Contrast color is a little bit more interesting. All right. All right. Here is the spoonbills with this really cool sky. If you didn't see the basic color correction in the final cull video, um, I'll just walk you through that really quick right here. So uh, that is straight out of camera. Big change here. So we lifted up the exposure just to be able to see and make the crop straight. Then I dropped the exposure back. Here's the actual exposure adjustment. Then the shadows come up, the blacks back down, warm up the whole thing. Um, oh, and then did a little bit of uh, noise reduction on the bird down there, tweaked the crop a little bit, did a quick spot removal, and then add a linear gradient. This is where it's going to start shining, right? This is when we bring that sky back down, tweak that a little bit more. I ended up adding another one at the bottom to kind of darken that. And then we do the sky select and then tweak that a good bit. And that's when that sky select really brings that sky into form there. Overall, it looked a little too light at that point. So I darkened the whole thing and then we just kind of tweak it up with the sky to get the sky a little bit brighter. So everything looks a little bit more realistic. So we've gone from there to there. Big change already with that exposure. But that is why I shot it that dark to begin with. I knew I'd be able to bring this up without much of an issue. The quality looks fine. I shot it at a thousand ISO. I could have and should have actually dropped this to like 500th of a second or 250 and then shot that at 250 as well uh, to get a little bit more dynamic range out of it but it worked out at a thousand ISO and if we zoom into 100% here in Photoshop you can see the noise level is not too bad after the noise reduction I did in Photoshop all right so what's left to do on the edit here I don't really see anything I have to clone out I could kind of clean out those little bits right there but doesn't seem worth it to me so I'm just going to start right off with some curves here and I'm going to try and richen those trees up back there a little bit. So I'm just going to do some darkening, invert that mask, paint in with a big brush, and just lightly paint some of that in. Low opacity back there. And then maybe a little burning around the foreground there. And actually a little bit across that top cloud bank. And maybe a little on this bottom cloud bank. So there we go. We just kind of darken and richen the contrast up. Another curves adjustment layer. We will brighten things up a bit and we're going to do just parts of the bird now. So smaller brush here. Again, I don't have to be like crazy accurate, but we'll just paint some of that in on the head there. A little bit on the body. I don't want to go crazy on the body because just because that's big and then a little bit in the reflection. And then real small, we'll do some on the spoon's bill itself. And then this bird, I'm just going to leave that bird darker in the background. I want this to be the main subject that we see. Uh, those grasses are really standing out to me as a little too bright. So I'm going to do the same thing. If you watched the previous video uh, I just did of the wood stork. So we're going to do curves adjustment layer, darken the highlights, burn down a little bit like that, invert it. We're going to grab a big soft brush, low opacity basically kind of fit it right into those bright grasses. I'm going to hold shift and just paint across back and forth until I kind of paint those grasses down. The reflection's not as bad, but I just want to paint those grasses down so they're a little bit darker. 
Then I'm going to go back to the background, try a quick subject select. It should do a good job of grabbing these birds out mostly. And then I'll go back to that layer and then paint with black to get rid of that. And then I'll have to deselect and manually go in and kind of recover these other areas like the spoon, like the bill itself here. We'll just paint that back. Make sure I got all the head there pretty clean and bring that bill back so it kind of stands out. And then maybe a little on this one. But again, I don't want this one to stand out as much, so I'm not going to brighten him back up quite as much. And then lastly, I do think I could try to see that eye just a little bit better in there. So something like that with another curves adjustment layer, I'll invert it so it hides everywhere, and then we'll just paint some of that in on the head and eye here just to see that a little bit more. There we go. So there you go. We got a couple of spoon bills in with some crazy cool sky, really nice sunrise. And we've gone from that to that. See how much more of those spoon bills stand out and the grass just kind of fades away down there. That grass is really bold right there. And then here it's much less standing out, which I like a lot. That's it. I'm going to save that and close it. I will show you the before and after on that one mainly because it's just a massive difference here. And this is one of those perfect examples of shoot it dark to begin with to maintain detail in the area that I wanna get back, which is the sky. Uh, because if I properly expose the birds on this one, at least on these Nikon files, I would have little to no chance of getting that sky back. And even as it was, you can see the sky started a little bit lighter there, but we've gone from that to that, a big difference. And it looks really nice, quite an interesting photo there. All right, let's edit this fun spoonbill shot. If you missed the full edit in the final call video, or I should say the initial edit in the final call video, I'll just go through that really quick right here. There's the original straight out of camera, uh, did a basic crop, then tweak the blacks. Uh, so from there to there, just kind of darken the contrast, subject select, then kind of modify that a good bit to get it up to, uh, where did we make the adjustment? Let's see, there. So the subject select went from that to that just to kind of brighten up our bird's head and some of the wings there. And then I thought the whole thing was a little pink, so I dialed in a little bit of green to just kind of clean that up, make everything look nice and orange. All right, into Photoshop we go. Again, this is another one of these. Not a lot left to do here in Photoshop. I don't really see anything major I have to clone. I'm going to add a retouch layer, though, and just get rid of this one. This spot is just really bright and just kind of grabbing my attention a lot for some reason. So I'm just going to kind of see if I can tone that back down in there. And then maybe this one spot right here, we'll just tone that down a little. Just try to blend that in. And then those two spots should be a little bit less egregious. That's good. Oh, such a good word, right? Egregious. <laughs> so proud of myself on that one. All right. Oh, you know what? And then I see this random spot floating up there. So I'll just switch to the uh, spot healing brush and just kind of pop that out. Okay. I think all I really want to do is a little enhancement of the rim light and the eye. So we'll start out with curves adjustment layer. We'll do the eye first here. We're just going to lighten that up and then drop the blacks here just a bit like that to maintain that contrast. We'll invert that mask. Zoom right in here with our paintbrush, paint with white, and then just across, it's all about the catch light, just across the top there. That's all I want right there, just that subtle across the top. Should bring a little bit more life to the eye. There we go. It's subtle, but that's fine. I'm going to do an additional curves adjustment layer. This time we're just going to really brighten it up, invert that, and now we're going to go for these areas right here. So just soft, low opacity painting try not to go into the background if I do go into the background I just switch to black by pressing X on the keyboard and getting rid of it anywhere I don't want to see it and then yeah just keep edging this bird out here just kind of showing and enhancing if I go in too far same thing I'll switch to black and paint some of that out and yeah, oops that was a bad one so I'll just undo it and mess it up again so there we go just going along following the existing feathers and edge that's there. I went a little too far there. There's a nice rim light that's starting to happen there. So let's go with a small brush to watch this. I'm going to start hundred percent there. It's going to be too much and we're going to go right along this edge. You know what? This brush is too big actually. So let's zoom in. I'm going to go even smaller down to two pixels and we're just going to hit there, there. I'm holding shift to 
kind of connect the dots here. So I can just kind of outline this. Love the water drop on the edge there. That's always a nice touch. And we'll kind of swoop down around that. Come back around the top here. And then we'll hit this side. Now I'm going to go one size bigger up to three pixels because it's a little bit bigger glow up there with a little bit softer edge. So that three pixel brush should work out. And it's already getting pretty white there. So this looks good now, except for that start right there. So what I'm going to do is get a big soft brush, paint with black, low opacity. So lower your opacity. I'm using my graphics tablet. And so I'm just going to lightly paint it out right there. So it transitions in quite nicely. So if we take a look at just the mask, look at that. So instead of just being immediately watch when I undo that immediately bright white right there, we just kind of fade it out so that it transitions really nicely into that bright white rim light. Okay. So that's what I do with something like that. Back to the paintbrush. We'll go back down to that three pixel brush with lower opacity here. And we're just going to kind of oops, switch to white. So I actually see what's happening and paint that rim light in around the edge. And this is the, the kind of fine detail, tedious work that I think makes a nice difference on these subtle images like this with the backlight. So down here, I can kind of enhance the rim light along the tail feathers there, which will be really nice. Go a little bit bigger brush, make sure I don't go into the background too much. If I do, I'll just switch to black and paint it out. And if that's a little too bright there, so I'll just back off of that a little. And then here we go. We'll just enhance right along there. And that should do it. So let's see what that layer does before, after. It is real subtle, but if I zoom in more here, watch this. Before, after. It just gives it that little pop that I think it could use. And this image is quite done for me. I love the lens flare that like the sun glow that's happening top and bottom there. So I think we're good on that one. So let's save it. We'll close it up. Go back to Lightroom, look at the original just so you can see the total before and after. Nothing too major in Photoshop here. And I don't think we did anything too crazy in Lightroom to begin with, other than get rid of that mess up at the top and bottom. But a big difference there, a nice, clean, finished looking image in the right, but the left one definitely needs some help. It was not quite there yet. All right, guys, this one should be really fun. I'm looking forward to doing a final edit on this one. Nice change on this one though. Nothing too major, but uh, just basic crop. And then we did some gradient stuff to kind of darken the bottom down there. A little bit of adjustments uh, on a subject select to get this bird to stand out, left that one dark, and then just kind of tweaked up the mask on that. So nothing too crazy yet, but here we go. Let's go into Photoshop and see if we can kind of tweak this up. And let's also see if we can make this look a little bit more pleasing to the eye. So first things first, let's clone out anything we don't want. I kind of like these feathers glowing there. So I got to say nothing for me to clone out. So I'll use this retouch layer to fix this sun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my paintbrush and sample this really bright yellow, like right on the edge there. So you can see it goes from this real intense yellow to this like dullish yellow and then into this whitish gray. So I want to get this bright yellow right there and we're just going to start painting in. So I use option on the keyboard to sample that color with the paintbrush. And then I'm just going to start painting it in around all the edges here. So I can just fill this thing in white or this white thing in with some colored sun. And we just paint around the edges small first, just so I don't bleed out into the water anymore. Then I'll get a little bit bigger brush and fill in the rest here. And oops. This will look decent to begin with. So it's better already that it doesn't have that, but it looks fake to me. So what I do in this circumstance is I add a curves adjustment layer to it. And then I do a thing called clipping. So you're going to hold the option key on Mac, uh, alt key on windows and click on the border between the layers that makes this adjustment only affect this layer where there's pixels. If you want to learn more about exactly how that works, check out my Photoshop course. All right. So I'm going to lighten this up and get it closer to white but not totally. We're going to invert the mask so it goes away and then grab our paintbrush and just softly paint in the middle of this to kind of give it some variation. So watch, 
that was how that's just flat yellow and then that gives it some variation now i went a little too far so i'll just back off of that a little bit and then i do think we could actually go back to this paint layer do some hue and saturation and then maybe bump up the saturation give it a little bit more color there so it has more yellow which then allows me to come back in and lighten this just a little bit more i would say and there we go now we have from that to that so it actually just fills it in with that sun looking like it's reflected down there and it just looks nicer than that funky funky gray that was there to begin with all right the only other thing i want to do on this one is really enhance that particular bird so i'm going to start with the curves adjustment layer give a good punch up here but maintain some contrast with a black point we'll invert that zoom in and then figure out where i want to just start painting that in so start some of it's going to start just right along this rim light here. Just a soft brush, low opacity, just painting in these edges. Get really tiny when it gets precise. Zoom in more if you need to. Try not to bleed out into the background. If you do, just switch to black. I just switch my foreground and background color back and forth like that, pressing X on the keyboard. Over here, a little bit of light opacity. So I'm changing my opacity as I go here with my graphics tablet pen. If you are not using one, then you just want to change the opacity on your brush tool up there. Uh, again, there's a bunch of shortcuts that can do that. Uh, you basically just press the number pad, uh, the number on the keyboard for the opacity you want, like the 10 um, increments of 10. So if you want a 50% opacity, you press five on the keyboard and all of a sudden you get 50% opacity. All right, bigger soft brush right here. Let's get this neck to kind of that glow in there, just wherever it's light is basically where I'm hitting. I'm not gonna bother going out into those individual feathers right now because I'm gonna use some automatic selection methods to try and make that happen. I'm gonna finish going around the head here. And I'm also gonna use this for the eye just a little bit there, a little too much. There we go, something like that. And I think, I guess I didn't do in here already. I would see some of that's left over from the um, the crappy masking from the subject select. So I'm gonna go back to the background. Actually, I'll make a new retouch layer and then just clone that in since I can see it more accurately here. Oops. See, that's where I just, for whatever reason, I don't like Lightroom. It's just less accurate and I find it just harder to see accurately what it's doing in there. But there we go, that was an easy fix. Back to my mask layer and we'll just continue painting in this rim light kind of make this stand out a little bit more. A little bigger, softer brush there on some of these areas is just fine. And we'll end it right about on the neck here. I don't know if I did some of this already. I think I did, didn't I? Or, no, I guess I didn't. Yep, that's brightening up, which is good. Get those areas. That area can definitely use some. What a nice, deep, rich glow. And then I did do that area, I believe. All right, some on the bill here. Just get these glowing areas around the edge there, just a little bit, and then that should be good. So watch this, before, after, before, after. Lastly, I do wanna try and get these hairs to stand out a little bit more, so I'm gonna go back to the background, isolate this area with a marquee selection, use color range, and then I'm gonna try and zoom in and get just these hairs so first off we'll start with none and then i'll select that hold shift and select that then i'll switch back to the grayscale so i can see what i'm getting hold shift and finish filling in there let's increase this fuzziness oops too far don't want to get the background there we go shift that i'm just adding colors to the selection here let's try that all right that worked and right there and we're just about getting all those hairs and we'll press okay on that come back to this and then that selection is just hidden so now i can go in and just paint that in and get those little hairs to kind of stand out more and now watch look at that selection see how accurate that is instead of me having to manually paint that not bad huh so before after look at that glow yeah and then i'm just going to do a subtle glow on the whole head so we're going to do another curves adjustment layer Lift that up a bit, maintain the contrast just a little, invert it, and I'm gonna try the subject select in here, select, 
subject. Let's see how it does. It does decent. I'm going to add this selection to it. So I'm going to hold uh, on the Mac command and shift on windows. It'd be control and shift. And then I'll go back to this layer. I'm going to hide this again. And then we'll just subtly paint in some lightning up here around the head there and see how that does. There we go. Probably too much on the overall. So let me go out and view the whole image here. Yep. So then I'll deselect, just back off the opacity of that layer a little bit. That's better. All right, there we go. I think I'm done on this one. So before, after, and that's it. I just needed subtle adjustment there to make that bird stand out more. Uh, but I really love the, the darkness overall here. And let's try just for kicks. See if we can darken this section down here a little bit. There we go. It's a little too intense right there on that sky or the sun thing. So we'll fix that in a minute. Invert, big soft brush. Just paint some of that in here to richen that. Some across the top to richen that. And with that last adjustment, the sun just got a little too bright down there. So I'm just going to go back to this layer. I'm going to bring up a hue and saturation on it. And then just go ahead and lower the saturation to my taste. Something like that seems a little bit more reasonable. And okay, we're done. Let's save it. We go from that to that. Much better. And then we'll hop back into Lightroom and check that out as soon as it's done saving. Let's look at the original here. We'll wait for this other version to import the final version. Should be any minute now. Come on, Photoshop. There we go. And we'll go ahead and reset this and then look at the before and after on that. Nothing too crazy, but that bird is way more the subject, stands out much nicer, but still to me looks legit and natural in that scene. Next up, we've got these pair of spoon bills here, almost touching bills. Again, if you didn't watch the initial edit when I did the final cull, there's the beginning, basically just a crop minor exposure adjustment, bringing the shadows up, blacks back down for contrast, reducing the vibrance a little bit, slight color correction to make it less magenta, and then we're good to go on that one. So that takes us to here. Let's head on over into Photoshop. Okay, so first things first here, I'm looking around. I don't think there's really anything I need to retouch on this one. The main goal I want to do in the final edit on this one is to make this particular bird stand out a little bit more. And the way I'm going to go about doing that is added contrast. So I'm going to start with a curves adjustment layer down here. I'm actually going to drop this black point specifically until that bird richens up a good bit. But I don't want the bird itself to get much darker. So I'm going to put a point back on and brighten it up. Something like that should be good. Let's see if we can get... Let's try the object selection tool here and see if we can get that to work quite nicely on this particular spoon bill. I'm just going to wait for the object finder to finish spinning up there. There we go. That's a good start. And since I'm just adding contrast, I think that's going to work quite nicely. I'm going to go ahead and fill that with white and deselect. I'm going to zoom into 100% here and just kind of check around the edges toggle this on and off. It's really doing the trick for me. I just got to watch on the back of those feathers there. Yeah, that got a little wonky there. So just come back in with a brush paint with black and get rid of those kind of dark edges that formed from the added contrast from that selection not being perfect. I'm going to fade it out on the legs a little bit just so they fade into the reflection a little bit more realistic. And then I do want to check some of these feathers here and make sure I didn't lose any detail that was there, which it doesn't look like I did. So let's look at that in the grand scheme of this image before, after. Yeah, I'm digging that. Definitely makes that bird stand out. Lastly, I think, I think this is lastly, let's try adding another curves adjustment layer so we can pop the catch light on that eyeball. And again, as always, just going to make sure I do the top upper portion here where there's already existing catch light and make sure I don't hit that pupil. And in fact, I am going to, while I'm here messing with this eye, I'm just going to go ahead and drop another curves layer on darken it and then just darken that pupil ever so slightly. Let's actually paint with white so we can notice something happening there. 
And there we go. That should make those two changes should really make that eye just kind of stand out a little more. And it does. So I think that's about all I want to do. I'd love to have this toned down a little bit, but there's no easy way that I know of to do that and make it look realistic. I could spend a lot of time on it, but honestly, is the difference going to be that big? I don't think it's worth the effort. So I'm just simply going to go from that to that. And then maybe lastly, let's really lean into that. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> and lastly, let's really lean into that glow up top. We'll add another curves adjustment layer. Lift it up a bit, invert that, big soft brush, real low opacity. And I'm just going to kind of paint through this upper section there and just kind of add to that glow. So there we go. That's that photo. Let's save that, close it. We'll head back into Lightroom so we can see the total before and after on this one. And we'll be all set. Nice, easy edit. Really short one in this case. We didn't take a lot of time. So there we go. So now we have, there's my before and after. You can see how much more this bird stands out, the main subject here, in the final edit compared to just the basic Lightroom edit right there. And that's it. All right, on to the next one. All right, something a little bit more up my alley, a little bit different than the last edit I just did of that pair of spoon bills. This one is the single one and much more moody. This is definitely more my style. I love shooting this. I mean, Images like this are very pretty, don't get me wrong, but this is what appeals to me a little bit more. Okay, so if you missed the edit in the final cull video, you can go back and watch it there fully, but basically crop, subject selection, we're going to go ahead and, let's see, what did I do there? Probably, I don't know why I kept showing and hiding that so much, but yeah, basically lighten, add contrast, and warm it up a little bit. So it went from, there to there and that brings us to where we are here so nothing too major into photoshop we go okay on this one i am going to remove some other stuff because it's all about the highlights bringing your attention there i do want to actually get rid of these little things so put my retouch layer on just going to use the regular clone tool just go ahead and get rid of that one I'm going to get rid of this feather. I mean, it's kind of interesting. The feather's floating there, but it's not particularly obvious that it's a feather. And so therefore, I don't think it's grabbing the most great attention. That one looks like a feather, but it's got a nice glow on it. So I think we'll leave that one. Yeah, there we go. That's looking a bit better. And now it's going to be all about enhancements of this bird and maybe a little bit of enhancement on that glow up there. So let's make that happen. Okay. Starting with a curves adjustment layer. Just go ahead and lighten that up a good bit. There we go. And then I'm just going to manually paint this one, I think, because I could do some automatic selection stuff, but I don't know that it's going to nail it exactly the way I want. So I'm just going to go in into these areas that I want to paint it in lighter and I'm just painting it. And so I'm just using white paint on the paintbrush, low opacity. I'm using it with, the pressure sensitivity of the tablet that I'm painting with. So if you're not using one of those, which I assume most of you probably likely aren't, then just go ahead and use a lower opacity. I would suggest somewhere around the 20 to 30 mark, something like that. Never has to be exact, just a low opacity that allows you to just kind of build up, which is what you want to do. So watch, I'll go down to 20 and then I'll push really hard. So I would do one pass there like that and then let go and hit it again, let go and hit it again and just kind of build it up like that. So I'm gonna go back to 100% just because it's faster to do with the tablet. That's basically one of the main reasons I love using the tablet is simply speed. It's not that you can't do most of these things. There are some things you kind of can't do with out the tablet pen, but generally speaking, most of the editing I'm doing is just simply enhanced by having this pen allow me to do the pressure sensitivity and really that one was a little bit much. So I'm just going to switch back to black and get rid of it. Anyway, the pen just kind of lets me really control fine tune this and just dial it in where I want. All right. These sections are going to get pretty tough here. So I'm going to go back to the background and I am going to use color range. So it's, uh, it's under the select menu. Sorry, select color range. Me and my shortcuts, right? And I'm just going to try and dial in the selection for all these highlights here. 
and I'm just holding shift right now. That was too much. I'm just holding shift and adding colors to the selection. There we go. That looks pretty good. Press OK. Yeah, that's fine. And we'll go back up to that curves layer. I'm going to hide the selection. And then I can just use a big brush and just paint over all this stuff. And I don't have to get quite as precise with that. But I get that effect. It's a little bit much right here. So I'm, I deselected. And now I'm going to paint with black just to kind of fade it off and make it look a little bit more natural. And that's about it. So normally, I would also be trying to get the eye to be seen and stuff like that. But that's, to me, that's not what this photo is about. This photo is about the preening. It's about that little touch of glow. But mainly, it's about the bill coming down and messing with these feathers, these bright pink feathers. So that's really where I want the attention to go. And that is where it goes. And that's also why I'm not going to enhance the reflection because I want the attention to stay up here. All right, last bit of edit on this one. I do want to just kind of softly enhance that glow, kind of like we just did on that last lighter pair of spoonbills. So just a curves layer to brighten it up. And then we'll just big soft brush, real light opacity. Look, it ends up looking like that. And we just kind of paint that in. It's a little too much for my taste, so I'll just back off the opacity a little bit there. And there we go, something like that. So there's before, after. Very minor. You know what? I'm going to do just one more thing here. I'm going to do another curves adjustment layer. I'm going to darken it a little bit, really mood this thing up, invert it. We're going to paint right through this area there. And then a little bit down here. Again, I'm just really trying to keep this thing moody. And then I'm going to back to the background, select subject. Should do just a fine job there. And then we'll just go back up and then fill that with black. So we got rid of it off the bird. <laughs> Not so great right there, did it? Sometimes <laughs> that subject select is rather funny. So we'll come back in with a brush. Fix that up. Obviously. That needs some help. The rest of it's looking pretty darn good. I am going to load up that selection from this one and fill that with black as well. So it makes sure I didn't darken any of those other areas on the bird whoops that I didn't want darker because remember I lightened that so I just want to make sure that kind of holds true there now part of the problem is it looks like the subject select didn't work down here so it it's too dark right the legs are getting lost in there watch so like that to that right so I'm just going to kind of paint some black in there to kind of bring that back I do want to see that separation that subtle detail is an important thing for me there and there we go so now now we really have it moody so from that to that and that really makes this bird stand out we're going to go ahead and save that and i'll go back to lightroom and completely reset that original raw file just so we can get a total before and after we'll let this finish up saving here it'll take us back to lightroom and again i hope you see this is something that I do with almost all my edits. It's a lot of little subtle changes that add up to, in my mind, a decent significant difference. So look how much more this bird stands out, especially these feathers right here. I mean, for me, as I'm viewing this photo, my attention is just captivated right here. Whereas here, it's not as much, you know? It is, that calls attention, but I really kind of drift back to this glow. And not to say that this isn't pretty, I like these grasses and the glow coming in there, but that's not where I want the viewer's attention to stay and be kind of honed in on. This edit to me does that more. And then if you take time and go back here, you will notice these grasses. They're just not as vibrant and pretty. So that's my take there. Just really trying to enhance that and make that bird stand out. I really am happy with this photo. I hope you guys enjoyed this edit and seeing it from shoot to finish. This one I think is gonna take a decent bit of editing to get to where I want, but I have a pretty good vision for this one. And if you missed the complete edit of this, the merging to HDR of this from how I shot it, please go back and watch the final call video. That's where I show that step by step. But as always in these videos, I'll just show you that's what it looked like when I imported it. And then that's what it looks like as the final edit. Basically just a big exposure bump. Go ahead and straighten the crop. Then uh, let's see, we actually, there's the exposure bump right there. The initial exposure bump was just to get the uh, horizon straight. 
And then we drop the highlights, shadows come way up, blacks back down for contrast, warm the whole thing up, and then we're sitting right at this point. And into Photoshop we go, okay? So I am gonna go back, you know what? Let's actually, let's take this one in as a smart object. Whoa. Let's actually take this one in as a smart object instead. So we're gonna do photo, edit in, open a smart object. And that's gonna let me have a little bit more control over what I'm getting in that sky there and in these birds. So I'm going to duplicate the layer as a copy, which actually, so I'm gonna duplicate the layer. We have to do that a specific way with these smart objects. So we need a new smart object via copy. I'm gonna go ahead and double click that layer. Yep, we know how to use this Adobe, thanks. And then we're just gonna darken it to get, as I said, more detail and color in a lot of these spots. And in fact, I gotta say, I think I like something along these lines a little bit more as my base, that darker for this edit. So I'm gonna put that darker layer underneath and then we'll mask the top layer. We'll invert it so we can't see it. And then we're just gonna come back in with a soft brush and paint with white, kind of overall here, and just bring some of this back where we want. I'm gonna leave the whole top kind of dark there and leave that section darker. We'll bring a little bit more detail into this area here. And then the important part is we'll bring more detail back into these spoon bills. I'm not gonna be super, super accurate with these guys right here at this point because I'm just doing some generic lightning. So it doesn't need to be perfect. Just kind of making sure I don't do something like that where I put like an odd halo around the birds. And that usually should do the trick. Make sure I get the spoon bills to actually stand out there. And then we'll do the rest of the enhancement with some curves adjustment layers here in Photoshop. But that I think is a better starting point than where I started with just the lighter layer. So let's take a look and see if this is feeling realistic. So that's where I started. See how everything was a little bit too light. I do want to have a little bit more of a moody edit there. So honestly, I should have just started a little bit darker in Lightroom, but sometimes you can't tell. So uh, this is a little odd right there the way that kind of, I think it's something to do with the HDR blend. It's so hard edge there. So what I'm gonna do is see if it's originally like that at all. So we gotta go back, find some of the original photos that I used and take a look. Yeah, see, we have that light section in there and then this one has a dark section because I shot two images. This is making sense now. Because I shot two images, the reflection actually changed underneath and so Photoshop tried to blend them. So what I'm going to do is actually copy the crop settings on this one. So check none. Let's get the crop there. We'll paste that crop onto that one. Hopefully it's close enough to the same. I'm going to open this one up in Photoshop and we'll layer that in. But I guess it's pr pretty orange there so I need to go darker. So let's go back to Lightroom. We'll drop the exposure, drop the highlights there. We can get a little bit more orange in that. Now let's try that in Photoshop. I'm gonna take that layer, move it on top of the image I'm working on, drop the opacity to 50%, see if I can line these spoon bills up. And let's actually instead, let's see if I can line the water up there. That seems like it should work better. And then We'll mask that out. Let's invert it. Yeah, see, I didn't even think of that. The water is looking strange there because of that. So I don't know if I should take this water because that doesn't give me full detail back in the oranges, you know, but it does kind of clean up that whole reflection section there a good bit. But I'm losing detail there that I'm not going to get back. So this is an interesting edit. It's a great one to follow along with. So I'm gonna go back into Lightroom here. I'm actually gonna to go to the darker version there, paste the crop on that. In fact, actually I'm gonna go ahead and reset that crop because I wanna have all the space that I need there. And I will lighten the exposure. I'm just gonna level it out just like I did on the merge to HDR version. So that's all we'll do. Our exposure is gonna come up a bit. 
We're going to drop the highlights a lot, and then I'm just going to lift the exposure enough to get some more detail there. I will lift the shadows so I see more. I'm basically just looking to flatten this thing out. And then I'll drop the blacks just a little. Something like that should do. The main reason I didn't do this on its own is because if we zoom in here, you can start to see, I mean, it's actually not as bad as I thought. I thought it would be a little bit more um, noisy. So maybe, <laughs> maybe I overkilled this and I could have gotten away with just that edit. But in any case, let's drop that in. I do think you will get, I, you know, I am getting cleaner and more detailed image out of the HDR of this versus me just using this and then punching these guys up. But sometimes it's smarter to use one exposure, you know, in any case, let's see if we can line these up. Let's put the spoon bills where they belong. Their positions aren't going to match exactly because it was two photos, but basically I'm just looking to line up this water somewhat down there, get it kind of close. So that should do the trick. We're going to add a layer mask to it, invert that layer mask. So we're not seeing that particular layer anymore. And then we're just going to use that and paint it in all the way across the bottom here. So all I'm getting is that new layer. So I'm getting clean reflected water instead of a weird merge to HDR water. So it's just a single image. And that looks much better, much more realistic. Doesn't have these weird artifacts and you can see with these two layers, it's not looking great. And I think that works pretty well. So now we have a good blend of exposures. Again, I do think I'm getting more detail out of that HDR. So it was still kind of worth doing. This is looking a little strange in there. I don't know if it's from what I just did. No, I guess it's just the ripples of the water. So I think we're good with that blend. Okay, so now I have my base layers all kind of put together here. Let's see. I'm losing just a little bit of detail there. Let's see if we can get that back at all. So on this lighter layer, we're going to come in there and paint with black. Not really, so maybe we'll just clone that in. In any case, at this point is when I usually, I'm happy with my overall exposure. I'm just going to flatten this image. So I just have one basic background to work with instead of three of those layers. Plus, watch this. 223 meg for this file before I was up to almost 800 megabytes. So it tripled the file size. And at this point, I know I don't need it. I'm fine with just manipulating what I have. Okay. We're going to put our clone layer on. Let's get rid of this antenna that is showing in the reflection here. That's an easy clone out. I'm just using the regular clone tool, just cloning straight across. And we just kind of smooth that thing out. Let's get rid of it from the sky as well. And while we're here, we're going to try and minimize that. I, I want to get rid of that bright white spot, but it's not really working with the clone. So I'm actually just going to use the regular paintbrush, sample this bright yellow, and just paint some of that in there. And then we'll sample that almost white, paint some of that back, a little bit more yellow. Just try and see, just trying to smooth that out. There we go. That works. Over here to the house, we're going to use just back to the clone tool. Sample from both sides here. Make sure I get some grass coming in. We'll get rid of that. And there we go. And then let's get rid of a few of these bright things here. I'm just going to try the spot healing brush. Just go ahead and pop these things out. And it's simply just a click and drag over top of them. Using content aware fill as the method there. And I'm just looking to get rid of just these brightest of little individual spots. That should do the trick. Okay. Onto the birds, curves adjustment layer. We're gonna start by brightening them up just a little. Now, I can't go too crazy here because if I do, it's gonna look absurd. Again, just like before, I also wanna make this front bird stand out more uh, compared to that back bird. This one's still my main subject. That back bird is looking away a little bit more, so I'm fine with that bird being a little bit more secondary. I will lighten that bird's head just a little bit just because he's a little dark back there, but I don't want to bring, I don't want to do that and like bring this body up quite as bright. I want this one to be the bright pink body. The head looks like it could use a little bit more on this foreground bird. So another curves adjustment layer, brighten that up and we'll just kind of paint that in there. Again, I'm just using a soft brush, low opacity, not trying to be super incredibly precise here. And we'll put a little bit more of that on there. Let's see how that's looking. All right, it's looking too bright. Like that bird, I think, should not be that bright there. So we'll take this layer, 
lower the opacity a bit. We'll take that second layer, lower the opacity a bit, and then we'll do it before, after. That's more realistic. The last thing I think that it needs is I think it needs to be warmer. So another curves adjustment layer. We're gonna go to the blue channel up here, put a point, drop some of that. We'll go back to the red channel, put a point and add some of that. Not quite that much. So I'll just nudge that down a little bit. And there we go. We'll invert that, paint it in on just the birds here because they were looking a little blue, just being in all that shadow. And we'll put some of that warmth just throughout this area. And there we go, I think that's about it. Uh, overall, I think this entire image could use some contrast now. So I'm just gonna punch that up a little bit, drop that down a little bit. There we go. Look how flat it was there to that. Now we're really popping. The colors got really nice and vivid here. It's a tad much there, so I'll come back with some soft, low opacity black paint. Same thing here, it's just a little too vivid. And then we'll just kind of leave it like that. I do think I want the top to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna, another curves, invert it. We're gonna darken it and just paint some of that in through up here, throughout the top. Just make that top cloud bank and then maybe a little bit throughout the bottom here. And there, whoops. Oh, I hit quick mass mode with Q accidentally. There we go, figured that one out. Okay, I believe that is gonna be my final edit. Let me take a look at total before and after. Feels good, feels realistic to me. It's just a touch light on that bird's neck. So I'm gonna go back to this. I think the body is okay, but this white neck right there and the head was just standing out a tad too much. It just didn't look realistic for the sun being that backlit. That bird should not stand out that much. It just doesn't look logically you know, real to me when I do it that much, but those subtle changes look good. I'm gonna go ahead and save this and we'll go back and look at a complete before and after on this. This is gonna be really interesting. So this is actually one of the before and afters, just the original raw file. Let me add that into this folder that I'm working out of here and we'll wait for this final image to come in. So if we really wanna get a good look at the total before and after, this is just a single image and we ended up there. I think a much better edit. Obviously these birds stand out way more. We got a lot more drama out of things. Overall warming it all just a little bit too, which I think fits the image quite nicely. And there we go. That's my final edit on that particular image. A lot of different ways to get there. And I think in hindsight, I probably could have gotten there from this single image because now if I take a look here, I can darken this one and totally get the detail back in there that I want, right? And then even by lightening it a good amount right there, it's not too noisy. I mean, it's got some grain, but I shot it at 160 ISO, so I'm fine with that. But it, it is a fun experimentation to make that HDR that allows me to go from that on this file to that and still have really, this is pretty grain free at that point. It's pretty, you know, doesn't have much noise at all. And honestly, I can lighten this up to that point and still look really good and get all that detail back. I could also darken this up there and go more moody with it. So I do have a lot more leeway with a file like this because it's blended from those two. You just have to be careful. I didn't notice in my initial blend with what happens with things like this where the water is moving and ripply. So just be careful with stuff like that. But overall, I think we got to a good spot. Real super moody edit here. That sky is interesting. I hope you like that one. Okay, last edit here. All right, this is just nice spoonbill portrait by itself. If you missed the edit in the final call video, go ahead and check that out. But basically went from there to there. Nothing too major, just some basic uh, shadow lift, blacks down for contrast. I did shift this towards the green a little bit, but I think in hindsight I went a little too far. So I'm gonna go back towards magenta just a couple of points and then I think we're looking good there. Let's go ahead and take that into Photoshop and we'll do a final edit on this. Not going to be a lot to do here. I still have this open from the last time. Okay. So yeah, not a lot to do here. I don't really have anything to clone out. I do want to see if I can darken these brightest of bokeh balls back there. So let's add a new curves adjustment layer and we'll start at the highlight end here 
and drop that. And there we go. Yeah, there was some detail in there. So I should be able to kind of bring that back. And if we just come back in with a soft brush and paint with white, we should get that color coming back. It is getting a little oversaturated and different color. So I'm going to play with this luminosity blending mode down here and see if that does it. But that looks pretty gray. So the yellow is better, but it's not the color I want. So I'm going to go to that curves layer. We'll add a little bit of red to it. That should help. And then we're going to add a lot of blue to it. And that should also help. There we go. So now it's more of that orangish red that the rest of it was before, after. And it doesn't get that crazy, insane yellow. It's still not perfect. I'd love to have more detail in there, but it's close enough, I would say. Okay, gosh, overall, I think maybe just a little contrast. This is not a photo that needs a lot. So let's darken a little there, lift a little there. That looks pretty good. I just nudged that highlight point down with the arrow key a little bit. So before, after, that's, that's nice. I do like that improvement. And then let's mess with the eye here. Let's see what we can do. We're going to go curves adjustment layer. We'll punch this up a bunch for the catch light. Soft painting, real tiny, mainly just going to highlight that backside there. And then maybe just a little bit of that horizon through the eye there. Make sure I don't go into the background too much. And let's do like we did on one of the earlier photos. We're just going to blacken that center. Was it pupil, I guess? I always forget the parts of the eye. I think this is the pupil. I'm just going to darken the bottom half, though, because I just lightened the top half to kind of enhance that catch light. And actually, now that I notice, I zoomed in way too far there. There's a bit of a dark line around the outside edge here. And if we just paint some of this blackening layer in there, it's just going to make that a little bit more bold, a little bit more obvious. So it's just kind of that outline. We're right? basically giving this bird some eyeliner, right? So watch before, after. Nothing too major there, but between the two things, that to that. Definitely makes that eye stand out a little bit more. Before, after. There we go. I don't know what else to do on this one. If I really wanted to get picky, I could throw a retouch layer in and go in and try and kind of clean up some of this, these muddy spots, you know. This bird's a little dirty hanging out in the marsh, I guess. So I could do some cleanup on those, but it, I'm not going to get it perfect. And nor do I think I should, you know. Uh, that's just part of the look of this bird, but I guess we could get some of those, the worst kind of egregious spots. That's right. I just said egregious. It's a good word. All right. <laughs> I got to amuse myself doing these videos somehow, guys. I don't know what else to do this one. This one is pretty good. You know, it was amazing lighting, just nice soft backlight, but that's an improvement overall, right? Before, after. So let's save that. We'll go back. I'll reset the original on this one in Lightroom just so we can see the complete before and after. Yeah, it's a little bit more flat. The color is less intense there. So once I close that, there you can see. Now the total before and after on that is a decent change. So we went from that original to that before, after. Oh, and I did the cloning of that second bird's bill out in um, Lightroom originally, but I don't love how it did the edge there and I didn't notice it when I was working in Photoshop here but now I can go back in and clean that up with my retouch layer there and now I see I hate when I zoom that far there's just a little bit of that sticking out it just kind of blurred out from the edge so we'll just clean that last bit up and there we go that's our final image thanks so much everybody I hope you enjoyed this whole entire shoot it was a really good one I had a lot of fun doing it and I think we got some great images out of it